This one's called The Seduction of a Christmas Pudding, and I wrote it as an angry MA student because Kath was too wise for me at the time. She still is. <clears throat> I see you there. I shouldn't. I dare not raise my eyes, but like the blazing sun on a cloudless morning, I see you without looking. My sweat sweetheart, enthroned in the heart of our breakfast table, merely the thought of your glazed perfection sets my limbs a-tremble. Though I, I seek for calm, attempt to fix myself upon the fine mug of Yorkshire tea, I find I cannot quench myself in those liquid depths. Your serpentine offering is too strong that I, your faltering Adam, am forced to sin to satisfy my cravings. I look up and you sparkle, a moat of dust caught in the final ray of sunshine that departs the winter of this great earth. Brown is the color that most would ascribe to your glory, but such injustice would never dare profane my hallowed lips. For is there not a muted beige that dapples across your rounded peak? Can my eye not trace <clears throat> the coffee folds and chocolate ripples that run down your curvaceous and sloping sides? <laughs> is there not a perceptible, dare I say, thickness <laughs> to your base, girded as you are with a hint nay? Say a whisper of orange peel. I scoot closer, my chair legs scraping across the faded linoleum, my Yorkshire tea forgotten like a summer love from a misspent youth. My mouth is awash with saliva. Truly, a veritable Ganges of desire is damned behind these puissant lips that, with one twitch, would race from my chin and drown the entire room. Nay, Say the entire planet in my ardor. A slight cough as the room grows colder. I lift my eyes and turn to the source of the chill, the epicenter of this ice. I say, wife. <laughs> and the wife says, yes. It strikes me that making love is a lot like eating an entire Christmas pudding. The temptation is almost as thrilling as the act. <laughs> My words flail into the silence. Most people would take that lack of response, of acknowledgement as disinterest, but I am not most people. No, for instead I note that slight shift, that barely perceptible shuffle of newsprint betwixt my beloved wife's fingertips. A shuffle that states nay, say, screams that her perfect and undivided attention is wrapped upon me. That's nice, dear. Have you taken the bins out? <laughs> Alas, to my shame, I had not. I say, cat, the tabby atop the garden fence beholds me with interest. I have heard it said that a cat has only a cursory kind of intelligence, but entrapped in that emerald gaze, I came to understand the depths of perfidy in such a statement. No, as I stood there, <clears throat> Foul liquid oozing from the rubbish bag and into my Wallace and Gromit slippers, an overflowing bin before me open like a rancid bouquet. I catch a singular glimpse into the glowing soul of this felicitous feline and find it much to my liking. Of course, the cat merely says, Meow, as cats are wont to do. It strikes me that making love is a lot like eating an entire Christmas pudding. Sorry. <laughs> one, should one should never rush, and the gooey bits are found at the bottom. <laughs> too much, too much, I know it from the moment my ill-considered words drip like sewage from my lips. To discuss such things with one's wife is one thing, but to brag of such salacious musings to a lady of the feline persuasion is an offence too shameful to countenance. Indeed. The tabby's tail, once so proud and attentive, curls with abject horror. She casts her noble head to the east, and her sure footsteps take her from my sight. Cashiered in such disgrace, I have no choice but to return to the sanctum of my kitchen. And yet, 
As I close the door behind me, I am accosted by an absence. My loving wife, whose nightly newspaper musings are the purest and most silent of joys left on this wretched planet, has vanished, disappeared, with neither good night nor God bless. And yet you, my darling, are still here. <laughs> Like the glow of the North Star that once led wise men to their Messiah, so too does your auburn sheen draw my eye, my body, to you. But alone, as we find ourselves, the glamour of perfection melts like butter in the microwave. For are those not crumbs displaced from the spot on which they once were? Was there not a sprig of ivy now vanished that crowned your perennial brow? And yet, I am no child to be put off by a mere spot of imperfection. There is no virgin in me to stand and blush in my lace petticoats. No, such coquettishness is lost to me now, for I am a man grown. That is not to say, a man without taste. The firelighter sits beside the hob, and it is but a trifle to take it up. I know you are soaked, my darling. Nay, say, doused in brandy. The flame flickers in my hand, held high above my head in all Promethean glory. I say pudding. It strikes me that making love is a lot like eating an entire Christmas pudding. Both are acts that will destroy a righteous man. The flame descends, and in that instant we are engulfed. Blue fire races across your surface, and so too as it infects my veins with the soul of desire. My actions are no longer my own, for I am a man possessed. One hand takes the spoon, the other busy at work on my belt. The silver shard cuts into the flames, but you hold for me, my darling, as I knew you would, for you are a goddess. My trousers slip to the floor, and I move towards the table, and you move towards me. Say not that I lifted your plate, nay, say instead that the individual strands that make up our existence conspired to twine us together. I pause a moment to blow out the flame. I am, after all, not Dulali. <laughs> the whole glistens before me. Can I do it? <laughs> Held here under the spell cast by the spirit of night itself. Yes. <laughs> A single thrust for warmth, for passion, for glory. Time itself stands aside for our coupling, and in that one single perfect moment I can see into the beautiful beating heart of creation and find it is one with my own. A slight cough. The room grows colder. I raise my eyes, and there stands my loving wife, <laughs> slack-jawed in the doorway as she observes me, trousers down to my ankles, my wilting manhood halfway inside a yuletide dessert. <laughs> and it was then, my darling, that I realized 'twas I the one who had just been fucked. <laughs>